Welcome to this Premier Training revision video that looks at budgeting for materials. There are a number of steps a manufacturing business needs to go through when budgeting for the raw materials it needs to purchase for production. You might expect this to be a simple case of producing a sales forecast to predict how many items you expect to sell, agreeing production, and then purchasing the raw materials to produce and sell the goods required for the period. And whilst this isn't necessarily incorrect, there are some complicating factors. For example, what if the business already has a stock of finished goods in its inventory, or plans to keep some in reserve for the beginning of the next period? Or what if a percentage of finished goods is anticipated to be rejected after production? And there's even more the business may need to consider. What if it also has a stock of raw materials already in inventory? Or plans to keep some in reserve for future periods? Or what if a certain amount of raw material is expected to be wasted during production? All these factors will directly impact how many finished goods are going to be needed to meet the sales forecast. These additional factors could also mean the business needs to adjust its plans either up or down, purchasing more or fewer raw materials than expected. And this is of particular importance because it directly affects the cash budget. Overestimating or underestimating purchases could lead to cash shortages or tied up funds that impact the business's ability to operate smoothly. Let's look at an example. Premier Manufacturing produce a single product, the A180, and has the following data relating to December. Using this information, we're going to work through the steps required to calculate the total quantity of material that needs to be purchased in December. The first step we need to complete is the sales budget, which will involve determining a key budget factor, that is, the starting point for the budget that influences activity for the period. For a manufacturing business, this key budget factor will be sales demand, and in our data, we're told that the sales forecast for December is 4,700 units. The next step is to prepare the production budget. That is the number of finished goods we need to produce. And there are a couple of factors that will influence this figure, such as levels of opening and closing inventory and whether any of the finished goods will fail quality control and be rejected. We're told that opening inventory of finished goods for the period is 200 units. These goods have already been produced and can be used to meet the demand. So we can deduct these from our starting sales figure of 4,700 units. However, we're also told that we require a closing inventory figure of 400 units. As these have yet to be made and are in addition to sales demand, we need to add this figure to the total goods we need to produce. So taking into account changes to the levels of inventory gives us a new figure of 4,900 finished goods to produce. So far so good, but there's a problem. The data says that 2% of finished production is anticipated to be rejected. So we need to account for this in our plans, but be careful as many students make a mistake with this next calculation. We can't simply add 2% to our 4,900 unit subtotal. If 2% of finished production is rejected, this must mean that good production must equal 98% of everything that's produced. And therefore the calculation required is 4,900 units divided by 98% multiplied by 2%, which is 100 units. If we'd added 2% to 4,900, this would have given a figure of 98 units, which wouldn't be enough to account for the anticipated loss. In this example, our figure for rejected production works out to a whole number of units, but this might not always be the case. And if necessary, you need to ensure that you always round up to ensure that enough units are produced. So, now we know the total of finished goods that needs to be produced, of 5,000 units. 
The next step is the materials usage budget, where we'll work out how much material we need to meet production of 5,000 units. The first part of this calculation is straightforward. We're told that each finished unit requires 2 kilograms of material, and 5,000 units multiplied by 2 kilograms gives a figure of 10,000 kilograms of material required to meet production. However, again, there's a complicating factor. We're also told that we expect 5% of material to be wasted in production, which we need to account for. And much like the earlier calculation for rejected production, this is another calculation you need to be careful with, as we can't simply add 5% onto our 10,000 kilograms. If the anticipated wastage is 5%, then the amount of material left to meet production must be equal to 95% of the total material requirement. And this makes the calculation 10,000 kilograms divided by 95% multiplied by 5% which is 526.3 kilograms to one decimal place. And assuming material is bought in whole kilograms, this time we do need to round up to 527 kilograms, and not down to 526, to ensure we have enough material to meet production. So, now we know how much material our 5,000 units will require, 10,000 527 kilograms. Though we're not quite finished yet. The final step when budgeting for materials is the materials purchases budget. And we're told that we have some materials already in inventory, in fact 1000 kilograms. So if we already have these available, we won't need to purchase them, and we can deduct this from our total material usage. And we're also told that we need to plan for a closing inventory figure of 500 kilograms of material, which we will need to purchase in addition to the amount that will be used in production. So we need to add this amount on. So, accounting for opening and closing inventory, the total quantity of materials we need to purchase is 10,027 kilograms. Now, by applying the standard purchase price per kilogram, we can determine the total cost of materials required for December, essential for the cash budget. Also essential to the cash budget is the sales forecast figure, and by applying a selling price per unit to our initial sales forecast, we can also derive the total expected revenue for the period. I hope you found this video helpful. And thanks for watching.